Hello and in this video you learn to create a basic chat app with React and Firebase and also use Firestore for your database. You can type messages from multiple users and all of the messages will update in real time. You will also have a Google login and as you can see the Firestore database. First thing you need to do is go to firebase.com and go to your console. In here add a project, give it a project name. I'll give my chat app, press continue, continue over here as well. Select the email and create project. Wait for it to load and in here create a new web app. A single project can have multiple web apps so you can give it whatever name you want. Click register app and here you'll get your credentials. We'll use them later. Open a new Firebase console tab to set up the authentication. Over here, we can go into the authentication tab and begin working on that. Click get started. And once this thing loads, click Google, click enable, select the email and click next. This should do everything. Finally, you can go to your Visual Studio Code to finish setting up your project. In here, you can create a new folder in your desktop and drag it into your Visual Studio Code. Next, you can go into your terminal once you click Trust Authors, and we'll be creating our Vite app here. You can run npm create Vite at latest. Wait for it to load a little bit and write dot slash, enter, react, JavaScript, and now run npm install to install all the dependencies and Firebase. Over here, you can go back to the tab with your credentials create a firebase.js file in the root of your directory and paste all this code inside. We'll make some minor changes. First of all, we'll import get auth. We will not need analytics today from firebase slash auth. Also, we'll make a change at the bottom of the file. So instead of get analytics, we get auth. Also, don't forget to change the name to auth and export app and auth. So we can say export app auth like this. Next, we can go into our app.jsx to make all the front-end functionality and all the function. In here, we can remove all the boilerplate and imports and make some imports of our own. First of all, we can import Google Auth Provider and sign in with pop-up. This will be used for our login with Google. Next, we can import doc, set doc, get Firestore, get doc on snapshot, and we'll be making some more imports later. And we'll be importing this from Firebase slash Firestore. So this will be us working with our database. So first thing we'll do is create our login with Google. So we'll create this function, handle Google login, which will say, Auth provider equals Google auth provider. So we're showing what we are using for our login. So it's Google or Microsoft or whatever. And we can make a try catch block to be able to catch any errors that might occur. And inside the try block, simply say this const result equals wait signing with pop up. You can add more stuff to this, more functionality. This is the simplest way you can do this and the fastest one. Don't forget to make this an async function as we're using the await keyword. And now inside our return statement, we can create a button with an on click of handle Google login, run the server, and also make uh, the button login with Google, add some text to it. And this will be the login fully done. Now we can actually work with the messaging and the database. So as you can see, when we click on this, this pop-up opens up and we can actually log in with Google as intended. So there are no errors on this regard. So if we go into our console, we can see that the user has successfully logged in. Next, we can go to our project and go to Cloud Firestore. This will be the database that we're using to store all of our messages. So this will be where all of our data will be stored. Click create database. And for now we can start in test mode. Select where you want your server to be. So where do you want this stored? That depends on relatively where you are. I'm in Europe, so 
this will be where we're going to be putting our server. And here we have this database. For now, it is completely empty. Back in our code, we can make some more imports of collection, add doc, order by, query, set server timestamp. And we'll be creating some use effects and functions. First thing is going to be a use state, which will hold the current user. This will be quite important. Also, we make another use state for the messages. This will be an array of all the messages that currently exist in this chat. And our final use state will be the handle message, uh, the current message. So basically, this will hold the current message that the user is typing in and sending. And we can create a use effect. So we can say cons q equals query collection db is the database that we have created just now. The collection that we're going to be using is the messages collection. And we're going to be ordering all the documents inside of this collection by their timestamp. So when they have been uploaded. Currently, we haven't added the functionality to add the timestamp, but we will get to that. Also, we can say const unsubscribe equals on snapshot, q snapshot. This will be used to get all the messages in real time. So we can say set messages snapshot dot docs dot map like this. And this will get us all of our messages in real time. So this will actually work like a proper chat app, like it should. So we will have this kind of code. And this use effect should be mostly done. We simply have to return this unsubscribe and say that this will be a run every time the component is updated. We can add another use effect. This use effect should be more simple. It will be for storing the current user. We can say on auth changed, auth user, and we can say if the user is actually available, so if he's logged in, we can say that the user is that particular user. If not, we can say that the user state is null. So basically there is no current user, so we can't actually access. And next we'll actually create the function for our messaging. We can say set message equals async, because we'll have some await statements there. And we can say await add doc. So we're adding a document to our collection of messages. In the previous use effect, we actually sorted it. And here we'll be adding it. And each document has certain fields. First of all, the UID of the user. Next, his uh, profile picture. Also his display name. Next, we will have the text, the actual message that the user sent. And finally, timestamp. So when the user has sent this message. And in each of these documents will be stored a separate message from well, all of the users. We can also set a new message to an empty string because the person has already sent it. Also, we can replace the React fragments with divs in our return statements. And we'll make everything conditional. So basically, if the user has logged in, then we'll have all of the chat functionality. Otherwise, if the user hasn't logged in, we'll have the login button. So first of all, we'll display the actual user's name. So his display name, so we can say logged in as user.display name. Next, we'll have the input. The input will show the actual message that the user is typing in. So we can say the value is new message. And on change, it, we can say that it changes with the set new message. So a normal input. Also, we can have a button to send the message. We've already created all the functionality, so we can simply say on click, send message. That's all we need to do. Next button we'll have is the logout button. So we don't even need a separate function for this. We can simply say auth.signout and add some text, so logout. This part is done. Now we actually need to display all of the messages. For this, we can say messages.map. Remember, we already filtered them. And we can say message. 
and each message should have its own key, so its own unique ID, which we have, the message.id. Also, we'll have an image, so the user's profile picture that we've stored earlier, and we can say source equals message.data.photo URL. Under this, we will have the message.data.text, so we'll display the actual message over here. If we go back, we will see some errors. First of all, I forgot to change the view state to have a default value. Secondly, this error you probably wouldn't have. I off screen accidentally deleted some stuff. So we'll re import app and redefine db. You will most likely not have this error. And now it's all working, there are no errors. We can once again log in with Google, so choose one of your accounts, and we'll test if the sending the message actually works. So we can say, hello, this is my first message, and as you can see, it instantly displays the message. In our database, it created the collection and the correct document for the message. Off screen, I've made some changes, and now it actually looks good. If we log in with another account and send the message, it will display all the other users' messages to the left and their own message to the right. This is purely uh, visual changes, no actual functionality. The only line of code I've added is this one, and also I've changed the index.css, which you'll be able to see in a moment. Otherwise, if you have enjoyed the video, Please like and subscribe. Thank you.